Donuts, the whole story. Clock strikes five. Shop is closed. Donuts sleep. So we suppose. Donut here. Donut there. Hello, sprinkles. Hole in one. You don't say. Lots of donuts everywhere. Stop, thief! Golden sprinkles. Some with frosting, some without. Sprinkles, come back here! Some with jelly in, <laughs> and out. Well, this is a bit of a jam. Powdered donuts, maple bars. Eh? Donut cops drive donut cars. Typical. Who wrote this book? Donut trucks. Donut trains. Donuts do not make good planes. Don't sell the mud shop, Wilbur! Donut pirate. Donut ship. Yar, come down, Pan, or you'll get your just desserts. I am just a dessert. <laughs> Donut's trip to take a dip. Hey! Sprinkles! Donuts play a donut sport. We can't stop him! He's a holy terror! Jump! Donuts take the last resort. It's a whole new ball game! Donuts dance in sprinkle rain. April sprinkle. Me tinkle. Donut floors must need a drain. Donut doctor. Donut bed. Feeling crummy? Donuts who just treat the head. I don't know. I just feel empty inside. You're a tough donut to crack. <laughs> donut farm where donuts grow. Who is hiding in the row? <laughs> Robber runs. Police car stalls. <laughs> I'm gonna be rolling in the dough. Robber meets a dog downfall. Robber's caught. Dog is back. <gasps> Donut ever run away again, Sprinkle Pooh. So is money in the sack. <sighs> We'd be in the hole without this. Donuts celebrate and sing. Donuts can do anything. Morning nears, so donuts run. Donut night has been real fun. Time to sprint and time to race back into the donut case. 
Shoppers soon will want their treat. Which one will they want to eat? What? People eat us? My insides feel like jelly. Your insides are jelly. Donuts want a long lifespan. Donuts craft a donut plan. All must help. The cop, the crook, even Pan, and Captain Hook. Straight line, me hearties. Are you up to Davy Jones in a pink box? This had better work better than your airplane. Sun is up and Rooster sings. Shop is open. Shop bell rings. Time for donuts with the dawn. But. Hey, where have all the donuts gone? Only empty trays and bowls. Donuts have a knack for holes. was a cat about town. Dashing, charming, perfectly suave. He lived unofficially at the fire station and had, since a daring rescue involving a very small Louise, a very shrill smoke alarm and a very tall house his tail still had the scorch marks. Luis liked to go visiting, as society cats do. Sometimes he'd travel in the fire truck. Everywhere he went, Luis was welcomed with open arms and leftovers. One night, after too much catnip and too many sardines, Luis was making his rounds when he took a wrong turn. He climbed a wall and saw Tabitha. Elegant, silky, perfectly sophisticated. Luis stopped. Tabitha stared. It was love, love from afar. Love under the spotlight of the moon. Love thwarted by a thick glass door and by Tabitha's owner. Shoo, she cried, shoo. Louise shooed, but he wasn't done. The next morning, Tabitha stared out at a vast bouquet of sardine tins and twine and feathers. Luis smiled. Tabitha smiled. Tabitha's owner did not smile. Shoo, she cried, shoo. Luis shooed, but he wasn't done. The next day, he brought mice. The day after that, he brought pigeons. And after that, balloons, which is not easy when you're a cat. Each day, Luis and Tabitha stared into each other's eyes until Tabitha's owner chased Luis away. Luis needed advice. He asked his friends over a bowl of cream you're an outside cat, said Mr. Pickles. 
then you need to be an inside cat, said Socks. Or at least look like one, said One-Eyed Winky. Luis had an idea. The next day, Luis showed up at Tabitha's door once more. Luis smiled. Tabitha smiled. Tabitha's owner clutched her hands to her heart and opened the door. Luis was inside, where everything was soft and warm and scratchable. And Luis and Tabitha were inseparable. until the doorbell rang. Is this him? That's him. And Luis and Tabitha were thwarted by the thick glass door once more. Luis had a new home and a new name and a new owner and all the sardines and cheese he could eat. But all he wanted was Tabitha. And all Tabitha wanted was Luis. It was love, love from afar. Love from far too afar. Then the doorbell rang. Is this him? That's him, and that's not him. And Luis was a cat about town once more. Luis needed advice. He asked his friends over a bowl of cream. You're an outside cat, said Mr. Pickles. And she's an inside cat, said Socks. And that's just the way it is, said One-Eyed Winky. So Luis went visiting, as society cats do. He went visiting all across town. Everywhere he went, he was welcomed with open arms and leftovers. And everywhere he went, Tabitha wasn't. Until... One night, Luis was riding in the fire truck when his tail began to tingle. Luis saw Tabitha, elegant, silky, perfectly sophisticated, and in terrible danger. The sirens began to wail. Everyone, outside, cried the firefighters. The crowd was a cloud of arms and shrieks as it gathered on the corner. But there was no Tabitha. And suddenly, there was no Luis. The crowd waited and worried and fretted. Finally, the gray parted, and from it emerged Luis and Tabitha, leading Tabitha's owner. The crowd cheered. Tabitha's owner plopped down on the curb and clutched her hands to her heart. She looked at Luis and Tabitha and smiled. The cat show judge placed a blue ribbon on Tabitha and the firefighters placed a gold medal on Luis and declared them both perfectly heroic. Luis was back inside, where everything was soft and warm and scratchable. And Luis and Tabitha were inseparable.
to his front door. Mom, do you know I'm about to turn four? All of my friends will come over and play. Then piles of presents will fill our driveway. We'll have a huge cake, mm. and my buddies will say, your party was perfect. Hip, hip, hooray! Mikey's mom smiled as he finished his speech. Your plan is fantastic, my sweet little peach. But no celebration is ever complete until you've decided what you want to eat. Her statement stopped him dead in his tracks. <gasps> Food, of course. Every party needs snacks. Well, pizza is something that everyone loves. But tacos fit in your hand like a glove. Burgers and hot dogs are easy to eat. But pork and fried rice is such a nice treat. He needed a guru, a trusted grub guy. Maybe my grannies can help me decide. What food did you have for your birthday, Babu? In Hong Kong, Chinese food is all that we knew. Huh. Nona, do you know what food you would choose? My roots are Italian, so pasta can't lose. Oh. Chinese or Italian, both are delicious. He remembered his cousin's birthday dishes. For the twins, rice and spice on their special day. While Joe had lasagna, he ate a whole tray. Yum, 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 yum. Mikey was stuck, not sure what to do. He couldn't decide between the two. Ravioli or dumplings? Linguini or lo mein? All of these options were hurting his brain. Focaccia, burrata, caprese, risotto, dim sum or wontons or noodles and shrimp roe. His mind was a jumble of possible choices. He heard both sides of his family's voices. He rushed to the park to get out of his head. His best friend, Sophia, found him and said, Are you okay, Mikey? Why so much sorrow? I can't pick a dish, and my party's tomorrow. Your mom is Italian, your dad is Chinese. You're free to choose food as unique as you please. Why not have both? Is that too outrageous? A Chinese-Italian mashup for the ages. <gasps> yeah! Sophia, that's it. I don't have to choose one. <gasps> he bolted straight home. There was lots to get done. Mikey burst in the kitchen. I'm ready to pick. I've made my decision. This isn't a trick. I want fried rice and marinara sauce. That'll be different, but hey, you're the boss. <gasps> he awoke the next day in a jittery mood. Friends were arriving. Will they like the food? 
Mikey's mom fried up a wok full of rice. In went the veggies, two eggs, and some spice. His friends helped give the tomatoes a squish. They drizzled the sauce mm -hmm. to complete the new dish. Mm -hmm. Mikey tensed up as his friends took a taste. But the fusion of flavors lit up every face. Mm -hmm. oh, this is good. Despite any doubts, the meal couldn't be beat. The fried rice was savory. The marinara sweet. It tasted more scrumptious than they thought it could. The whole party shouted out. <laughs> Different is good. As the season turned, the forest was dressed in new colors of rich amber, burned orange, and chestnut brown. Little Red the Fox was happy because now it would be much easier to hide. would be hard to spy among the dried brown leaves, burgundy bushes, and coppery grasses. Only in the open meadow would Hazel the Dormouse be able to catch sight of Little Red. Little Red and Hazel spent hours and hours playing hide and seek together. The two friends love jumping and rolling in the crisp, dried leaves. They love the rustling sound. The leaves are laughing with us, said Hazel joyfully. During these moments of happiness, the cold air hinted of the coming winter. Little Red felt a tinge of sadness. For Red, the smell of winter meant one thing, loneliness. Soon, Little Red's very best friend in the world would settle down in a warm burrow to hibernate. Hazel, perhaps this season you will sleep less, said Little Red hopefully trying to sound cheerful. Little Red, I am no fox. I am a dormouse. I'd like to stay awake and keep you company, but you know, in the end, I must always sleep. So Little Red started to think of ways to keep Hazel from falling asleep. What if I could make the sun stay high? Then winter would not be so cold. Hmm, what if I could ask the forest to hold its fruit? Then there would be food all winter long. <laughs> what if I tickled Hazel to stay awake? 
Then we could play and play. The Dormouse started to yawn. Ooh. Hazel, I want us to stay together forever, pleaded the friend. gives way to spring, I will be here for you, and we will play again. I know, Hazel. But before you sleep, may I tell you a story? Why, yes. Oh. As long as it is short replied Hazel sleepily, with head nodding and eyes closing. So Little Red curled up on the forest floor, and Hazel nestled into the soft, warm tail to listen. Before a word of the story was spoken, the two friends had fallen fast asleep together. trees. How trees sustain our planet. First, a tree is food. Would life be satisfying without trees? It would not. Sweet sap to gather. Pecans to pick. Nuts, berries, bark. To crunch, munch, and lick. Leaves for a koala. Bamboo shoots for a bear. A giraffe stretches up for an acacia tree's fair. Apples and syrup for you. Cherries and chocolate for me. People and animals are fed tree by tree. Second, a tree is comfort. Would life be good without trees? It would not. What gives you a seat? A floor for your feet. A place you can sit with your family to eat. What gives you a sofa? Shh! Some comfy chairs. A way to the attic with pull-down stairs. A baby's cradle. A double-decker bed. A dining table with a mom at the head. Places to sit. Places to slumber. A tree is lumber. Mm -hmm. 
Third, a tree is music. Would life be melodious without trees? It would not. Pianos and bongos. A violin and bow. The moan of a cello. Lonesome and low. The pom-pom of a drum. A guitar's twangy strum. Tree wood makes music zing, ping, and hum. Fourth, a tree is art. Would life be beautiful without trees? It would not. Paper for drawing. Recipes for cooks. Signs, magazines, glorious books. Brushes and paint. Or drawn by yourself. A creation on paper displayed on a shelf. Each artist is different, but all can agree a tree inspires creativity. A tree is recreation. Would life be fun without trees? It would not. Paper kites swirling. Boats floating by. Tall trees reaching up help us see sky. Oars and paddles. Benches with slats. Skateboards, balance beams, and long wooden bats. Wood shapes toys for girls and for boys. Sixth, a tree is home. Would life be comfy without trees? It would not. Sturdy branches to swing from. Hang on or rest. A perfect forked branch holds a knee a little nest. Habitat for a frog. A burrow and roots. This big hole is mine, say an owl's loud hoots. Protection and shelter. Under a wide, leafy dome. A place to sleep. A tree is a home.
seven. A tree is life. Would life be possible without trees? It would not. Storms, fires, floods, all kinds of construction. Trees need protection from man-made destruction. No place for a bird, no shade, and no green. Trees make the earth rich and keep our air clean. Explore a cool forest with its pine-scented breeze. Just remember, forever, be thankful for trees. Shells, a pop-up book of wonder. Shells glimmer in summer sunshine. They inspire curiosity and wonder. A shell found on a beach is the hard outer covering left after an ocean animal dies or moves out. Some beach sand is made of tiny bits of shells. Calcium is the substance that makes most seashells hard. Their varying sizes, shapes and colours delight and intrigue. Many shells shimmer and change colours in different light. This is called iridescence. Nautilus shells form in tight walls. Snail shells spiral in many sizes and colours. Beneath the waves, animals are protected by shells. A hermit crab protects its soft body by moving into an empty shell. Some shells blend in with sand, rocks and plants to help the animal hide. Decorator crabs attach live plants or animals to their shells for camouflage. These hard coverings don't always provide safety from predators. Grouper fish have crushing teeth plates for eating shelled animals such as crabs. Powerful jaw muscles help some sea turtles eat clams, crabs and conchs. An octopus has a short, hard beak to crunch on crabs and other shelled animals. Vibrant coral reefs showcase many shells. Reefs are formed as shell-like coverings encase tiny animals called coral polyps. Coral reefs are home to about 25% of the ocean's plant and animal species. Coral reefs are at risk of destruction by climate change, fishing, pollution and other causes. Sometimes a surprise glistens inside. A pearl found inside a giant clam in the Philippines weighed 75 pounds, 34 kilograms. Pearls are made when an oyster forms layers of hard matter over injured tissue or an irritant. 
only one in about every 10,000 oysters in the wild contain a pearl. From sandy shore to deep ocean floor, shells fascinate. last name. But Emily and Alex are different. As different as brothers and sisters can be. Big! Ooh. Little! Tayback's Safari Animals. Who am I? I have big feet. I have a long nose. I'm an elephant. Who am 
my. I have black and white stripes. I can run fast. I'm a zebra. Who am I? I have big teeth. I cool off in the mud. I'm a hippo. Who am I? The largest bird. I cannot fly. I'm an ostrich. Who am I? I have a big furry mane. I can roar! I'm a lion. Who am I? I am quite tall. I have a long neck. I'm a giraffe. Big, bigger, biggest book. Far. Farther. Farthest. Fast. Faster. Fastest.
longer. Longest. Short. Shorter. Shortest. Big. Bigger. Biggest. Lost. Max's puppy is lost. She was here, and now she is gone. thought. Where am I? Max was here, and now he's gone. Max looked everywhere for Puppy. Under the bushes, Behind the trash bins. And near the sandbox. But he could not find Puppy anywhere. He walked home alone.
Max had no appetite. He could not even eat dessert. In the middle of the night, Max had a scary dream. He could not go back to sleep. Max got out of bed and sat down at his desk. He made lost dog posters, lots of them. I lost my dog. Her name is Puppy. She is small and brown and friendly. Have you seen my dog? I really miss her. She is not just an ordinary puppy. She is my best friend. If you see my puppy, please call me. My name is Max. My dog is Puppy. And she looks like this. Max hung the posters near his house and near the park. Max walked home. Puppy wandered in circles, but she couldn't find Max. I'm sniffing everywhere, but nothing smells familiar. Why doesn't Max come and get me? Ah, I'm tired. Mm, I'm hungry. Which way to where I last saw Max? Oh, Max was sad. Oh, and lonely. Oh, he waited for news of his lost dog. He waited and waited. Ring, ring, ring. Then the phone rang. But the call was for Dad. It was not news about Puppy. When the doorbell rang, it was Max's friend, Lucy. Max told her Puppy was lost. I'll help you look for her, said Lucy. OK, said Max. for Puppy in the park. There were lots of dogs in the park. But none of them were lost. I have an idea, said Max. Let's go to where I last saw Puppy. We can just wait there. Puppy was tired of wandering. She said to herself, I'm going back to the spot where I last saw Max. Max waited for Puppy. 
puppy waited for Max. When puppy picked up Max's scent, she took off in the direction of the smell. Woof! Max recognized Puppy's bark and ran to meet her. <laughs> now you're not a lost puppy, said Max. You are found. Something red? <laughs> Look at all the red foods. All are good to eat. What red food would you choose for a tasty treat? Tomato. Strawberry. Red pepper. Apple. Watermelon. Greeny chooses watermelon. Mmm. Oh, mm. Yum. Look at all the yellow foods. All are good to eat. What yellow food would you choose for a tasty treat? Summer squash. Yellow pepper. Banana. Pineapple. Corn. Greeny chooses corn. Yum! Look at all the purple foods. All are good to eat. What purple food would you choose? for a tasty treat. Grapes. Raisins. Eggplant. Berries. Plum. Greeny chooses grapes. Mmm, yum. Look at all the orange foods. All are good to eat. What orange food would you choose? for a tasty treat. 
apricot. Yam. Carrot. Orange. Cantaloupe. Greeny chooses an orange. Yum! Look at all the green foods. All are good to eat. What green food would you choose for a tasty treat? Broccoli. Lettuce. Celery. Kiwi. Peas. Greeny chooses peas. Ah, yum. All done. Burr. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> What are you waiting for? It's a kid safe, ad free library full of storybooks brought to life. Ask your grown up and start exploring more fun stories like these. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Books app for free today.